But what happens when education becomes complacent? When pedagogy loses its mast amidst the turbulence of the relentless innovations of our time? What happens when there's a chronic disconnect between what we learn in school and the pertinent skills needed to thrive in our heavily changing world, technologically speaking? Well, I'll tell you what happens. This is where we come in. That's when a company like Steamledge happens. We're firm in our belief and conviction that untapped human resources is the greatest, tra um, is the greatest tragedy known to mankind. If you would indulge me in the next several minutes, I would like to put some meat on those very delicate bones. So I'm going to take you on, my, on a very small journey of my past. Growing up, I was privileged and grateful to my parents for giving me the best of education. I graduated, um, I topped my class so many times more than I actually care to remember. I changed schools a lot just to gain different perspectives in life from my peers and teachers. I was your poster boy for what dedication and hard work brought in one's education. So much so that I got a scholarship to study engineering at a prestigious university in the UK. Do you know that boy that, um, or that person that was so successful growing up that your parents would basically scold you? Why can't you be as successful as that person who's doing so well? Well, I was him. Well, I'm not bragging. I'm just trying to make a point. I was him. Um, I did so well in school, primary, secondary, that I thought I had it all. You know, going abroad as a scholarship student, it was really natural, I would say, to, to like expect that I would ride the wave of my success and maybe, you know, uh, make the dance list, graduate summer cum laude, you know, um, all those stuff. You know, that was exactly when the wheel started to come off. And I'm going to tell you why. What happened was actually very, very straightforward. It was very simple. A lot of my international colleagues knew a lot that I didn't know. I breezed through the math content like I was top of the math in that university. Anything math, I was there. But what happens to the practical subjects and the computer programming that was really, really alien to me. A lot of those students, a lot of my international colleagues did not have that problem, and they fiddled with that content as though it was second nature, and indeed it was. For the first time in my academic career, I felt inadequate. I was shook to my very being that I had to go on a mission of self-discovery. On a mission of self-discovery so much that I questioned the whole narrative that I built for myself. You know, I had it all planned out. So, um, by the time, well, although I did pick up programming, I did pick up electronics, and I did graduate eventually, but I was playing catch-up and second fiddle to a lot of my colleagues. I missed a lot of internship opportunities in, one of, in some of the top companies that, you, that, you'll ever, um, that you'll ever hear of. I'll tell you some, you know, Jaguar Land Rover, Aston Martin, Google, IBM. They were directly affiliated to my department in my university. And once you do well, you get a guaranteed internship, and I lost out on those completely. So I came to one realization that although I was good academically, Nurture beats nature. And what that means is I wasn't, natured, uh, I wasn't nurtured technologically. And even though I was somewhat gifted, I couldn't catch up. And so many people did better than I did. And they got those opportunities. So I realized that my education was lopsided. That was the moment that, uh, that, was the moment that epiphany struck. No child should have to go through the psychological trauma of feeling inadequate from a fault of 
um, no child should go through the psychological trauma of feeling inadequate through no fault of theirs. No child should feel left out when it comes to intellectual thinking capacity compared to their peers across the globe. No child should be denied the access to technology at their formative years so that they can become what they want to become. So returning home, I met my amazing co-founder. He's in the crown, Latimo Ulubinga. I appreciate you, actually. So Steamledge was born, an education and technology company that focuses on mentoring young minds to become the inventors of the technology they consume. That's our simple, that's the simple line that we actually follow. So what does that mean? It means our, our kids, our younger ones, play games. They should actually be able to create some of those games themselves. They watch cartoons and movies. They should be able, they should be able to create some of those cartoons they watch. They play with a lot of technological gadgets. They should, able, they should be able to hack some of those systems. So we came up with, we created a state-of-the-art technological curriculum that actually addresses all that from start to finish. So um, our curriculum runs the gamut, really. It starts from the very um, technological basis through to the advanced software development training. Our audiences or the students on our platform, we have primary school students, secondary school students, and some of the tertiary institution students as well. You know, according to law of physics, right, I believe that, um, you know, the universe and nature is ubiquitous. So basically, what that means is the early access that the first world countries give to their own kids whilst growing up, technologically speaking, if we could try and replicate that here and actually give that early access to our own kids, then it's actually going to make a huge difference. That's exactly what they do. You go into their classes, primary school, you'd see a six-year-old that can actually make something. He can build a game. He could make some animation. That's where it starts. He could use blocks of codes. He could do a bit of robotics and so on and so forth. So if we want to do that, you know, um, that is one of the things that we have to do to actually go towards that direction. You know, um, I'll give another thing. Like in high hockey, I watch a lot of ice hockey. I know that's weird. Um, you know, you play, you go where the puck is, not where the puck is being played, basically. So basically what that means is we actually have to streamline our own educational system towards that. Our educational system is very ill-equipped in terms of the resources and in terms of content to basically cater for these kids. So according to a World Economic Forum statistic, about 65% of the children aged four to seven years old will actually have to take up jobs in roles that do not currently exist. So to put that into perspective, it basically means that a lot of our children, um, a lot of our primary school younger ones and sons and daughters will actually not be, Ill, uh, um, be prepared. The curriculum that we have in schools will not actually prepare them for the jobs that they don't have a choice but to do. So what happens if they come across that kid from China and they're going for the same job in Google? How do you expect that child to actually get that job uh, uh, um, um, ahead of him? A lot of people are going to say, okay, we, um, we want in Nigeria to have the next um, Facebook, to have the next Google. How do you expect the kid to create that when he cannot compete healthily? If you take that kid and take him to the United States of America, he cannot healthily compete because of the curriculum he's been taught. 
So what we do is we go in the schools, we partner with the schools, they outsource their computing department to us, we go in with our curriculum and so on and so forth, and we do what we do. So today at Steamledge, I'm really, really happy to share with you that we have over 7,000 recurrent students on our platform that learn technology through their schools week in, week out across three states in Nigeria, in northern Nigeria precisely. And we're trying to do a lot more. Recently, we launched one of my favorite projects. That's the Almajuri project, where we try to create the content to basically help bring up this brilliant but underprivileged people in our society to be able to be able to reintegrate back into working class citizens at some point. There's a lot to that project that hopefully it's going to work out as much as we hope it will. A lot has happened in the educational sphere within five years in Nigeria. And it's a challenge for all of us young people seated in this room to actually think about and realize, okay, we're opportuned to basically have the education that we have. Just think back. Assuming you were able to learn technology, like you learned maths and English throughout your primary and secondary education, would you be exactly where you are now, or do you think you would go further, regardless of the career path that you've decided to, to, uh, um, to follow for yourself? So that's exactly what we're trying to do. So I call on everybody. I came to this TED Talk for one simple reason, to make a huge call. I'm not a big fan of talking. As you can see, I can probably, my soul is actually shaking. But I really, really want to call on everybody here today to actually have a think in that direction. We have hubs coming up. What workforce are those hubs going to use? We have companies, we have people investing millions of dollars in the country. What workforce are they going to use? Do we have to import talent elsewhere for those particular ventures to run? Or is it better that we work on that particular, on our particular population right now so that people export our talent elsewhere? I know we have a few people within the crowd that have exported their talent elsewhere, but there are far too few to actually say that we're actually doing enough. So this is a call. I urge everyone, if you have a child, Talk with your school and tell them what is the technological, what is the technology curriculum that they're using to make sure that your kid is actually future ready. How is he ready for the future of work? You know, I can stand here and talk about a lot of statistics, but I want to make a difference. Anybody that, that has a child, that has a brother, that has a sister, that has a relative, Try to talk with those schools. Do you have a curriculum that, um, do you have a technology curriculum that would equip my child to be ready in 10 years time? If not, what are you doing about it? It runs bigger than just technological boot camps. It has to be embedded in our curriculum. If there are government people within us, this is something that you have to, it's no longer a choice. You have to think it in that direction. So my final call is to join us in this race for human potential, in human ingenuity, to actually have human equity across the globe. And we can start it right here right now in Katsina State. How many schools are ready to integrate the technology curriculum in their day-to-day -day activities in the school to make sure that the kids are actually ill-equipped, um, are very equipped for the future. I care about kids a lot. I don't have any yet, but I plan to have one or two. But I have a lot through my schools. I have over 7,000. And I care about each and every one of them. Ten days ago, I was in Brno State. 
I stayed in the IDP camps for two days and interacted with girls, trying to understand their level of technology, um, their, uh, um, the level of knowledge they have so that I can build a technological content that actually fits them to some extent. So that other than just learning literacy and numeracy, they could actually learn something in tech so that we can actually have that. And right now, we're working so hard to make Nigeria an outsourcing platform for the AI data labeling. And I invite anybody that has any clue about that to join us here. So let's ensure the futures of, of our future leaders through STEAM education. Thank you very much.